Well, hello everyone. I have a real treat for you today. Nothing terribly unusual or new if you uh, surf a lot of uh, YouTube videos, but it was a real find. Uh, my wife found it at an antique store this week, so I had to show it to you. It's the Playtape 1200. Now there are a lot of videos on the internet with the different Playtape players as we'll look at these. Uh, I think I might have even done a couple of videos on some of my Playtape players that I have in my collection. The Playtape player was only had about a four year life. Uh, the mid to late 60s. 64 to 69, somewhere in that range, about four, maybe five years before the 8-track took over. And then, of course, the compact cassette uh, followed pretty quickly on the heels. But this jewel is like mint condition. The box is beautiful. And um, I got the biggest laugh. I got to show you this. So it, it advertises, you know, all these places that you can use it on the beach um, but also it says that you can uh, on the beach your car even on your boat so just to be sure I took it out to my boat and tried it and it does it works on my boat <laughs> so anyway uh, well what is the play tape oh and one more great great thing look at this this model very special this model uh, get this in the camera view it comes with a volume control. Can you imagine? Wow, I love technology. Yeah, so so let me let you take a look at this baby. Uh, it is missing the the owner's manual, but there's not a whole lot to these things. So let me show you. And this is an unusual model, and I'll show you in a minute why I'm being serious now. It is an unusual model. Um, the foam, the styrofoam is like perfect. I know that that light is a little bit hot. Um, let's see if I can get the camera to, there we go, there we go. You can see how beautiful that styrofoam is. And uh, let's see if we can get this open here. And there she is in all of her glory. The play tape, and look, a volume control. But the real peculiar thing about this, and I have about five of these play tapes, and none of them are nearly as pretty as this one, but all of them have a track one and a track two, which is the nature of the play tape, the two track tapes. This is a two track, and let me get an eight track and compare it to the eight track. Okay, we have the two track. Uh, cassette and then here's the 8 track cassette so you can see the size comparison if you've never seen one of these before they look almost identical in terms of their construction they both have a, uh, a, a, a tire here that um, a capstan or pinch roller pinch roller and um, they both use the um, this uses a much thinner tape. Let's see what size is this tape. I should know. The 8-track, of course, is a quarter inch or um, considered 6 millimeter. And the, this play tape, the play tape tape, is a... Let me get it just right. Uh, about three millimeters maybe a little over three millimeter um, yeah three millimeter and six millimeter so yeah I'm not sure about the tape speed on this I think it's three and three quarters which is what standard cassette tapes are compact cassette so here we have eight track compact cassette and then we have the play tape so there they all are stacked on top of one another so you can get a feel for the size. This particular 
uh, Nat King Cole, Dear Lonely Hearts. I've got about five of these. I bought a whole bunch of these tapes many years ago, brand new in their packaging, and a couple were uh, not still in their original packaging. I don't know why they had a run on Nat King Cole, but it's a good good tape. Then I have a couple that I really, really like, and I'm crazy about Glenn Campbell. And here's one of his albums on play tape. And then uh, I dug through my collection and I found another different album of Glenn Campbell. So that's a great one. And then about a few minutes ago, just a few minutes ago, I found this one. doesn't have a label on it. And the foam rubber or the foam in here was missing. And so I took the unit apart. Very easy to do. Just pull that screw out. And it gently lifts apart. Looks just like an eight-track tape, where it pulls out of the center and re re uh, winds it on the outside of the of the tape. Um, the only difference between play tape and eight-track in the internal construction is that they included a little clutch on the tire, and I just discovered that I didn't get the clutch engaged correctly because it's not pushing in. But it should, let's see if I, this one will work. Yeah, see how that's pushed out? And then when I push it in, it disengages. It grabs, there's a, there's a little grab that stops the spinner, the, spops the, the spool, excuse me, from moving. So when it's in this position, the tape won't unravel. But when it's pushed in, it releases that off of the spindle, the little catch, and allows the spindle to move freely. So apparently when I put this one back together, I didn't get it put back together correctly. So I'll have to fix that before I demonstrate this tape. I don't know. It's probably Nat King Cole because I got so many of those. But I did replace the foam, as you can see, and uh, I'll get that put back together. But let's get back to the play tape. And here we go. It's a little tiny thing. And it has a battery compartment. It takes four C batteries. And you can see how clean it is. It looks like it's brand spanking new. Other than my fingerprints, it is just as clean as a whistle. But notice also this right here. It has a channel 1, which all play tapes will have, channel 1. And you'll notice that the tape has a track 1 or channel 1. And that's what you'll hear. You'll hear all those songs on channel 1, and they'll repeat. So it'll play those three songs, and then it'll just restart and play those three songs again. If you switch it to channel two, um, it will play the channel two tracks. There's no automatic switching like it does with an eight-track tape. You know, they have a metal foil in there that makes the head switch to the different four different channels, four different uh, channels on, on an eight-track. Again, I think that camera is just can't handle the the uh, the uh, the amount of light that I've got going. But you see the four channels there, and this automatically switches each one of those into the next channel. So it'll play the whole tape. Play tapes don't work that way. You have to manually switch. But look carefully at the channel setter, channel switch. You have channel one and then channel two, and then you have a stereo. Now I didn't know this until I got this yesterday. That play tape apparently will play stereo, meaning that instead of just track one being a bunch of songs and track two being a bunch of different songs, it will play the right channel on track one and the left channel on track two. So if you switch it to stereo, it'll play both channels simultaneously and it will be in stereo. Now here's the thing. We got a couple things to discover with this uh, with this setup. This unit um, has an external speaker connection right here. External speaker. So we're going to check and see if that external speaker is a stereo jack. If it's not. <laughs> Uh, okay, you don't get the benefit of stereo on this play tape. You just get the benefit of one track playing on the right channel and one track playing on the left channel. 
uh, on the other channel and uh, whatever. Uh, I don't really see the benefit at all if the unit itself doesn't play actual stereo. Now the way that it, that it does that, now, now we'll have the benefit of having a lot of extra light here. If you'll see inside the hole there where the tape goes, you've got two heads. See them? Head, those two heads and then there's the capstan roller right there that pushes against the rubber tire and makes the tape move. Well, one tape, and they don't, those heads don't move. One is playing on track one and one is playing on track two. Or in this case, one is playing on left and right. And when you switch this to stereo, both of those heads are enabled and they both play into the speaker. So, um, I have a, I have, I think I have a stereo tape on the way. I paid like four bucks for it with free shipping. So we'll see. I have no idea whether it's stereo. It didn't indicate it. The only indication that I have that it's a stereo tape is that there are only three track, only three songs on the tape and they don't indicate track one and track two or channel one and channel two. So I'm kind of assuming, we'll find out if I'm correct or not, that that particular tape that I ordered on eBay really is a stereo tape. Um, so let's play one of these. Let's play uh, Glenn Campbell. It's Mary and Peter, kissed by the shades of night. Okay, that's track two. Switch to track one. Through cupped hands round the tin can, I pretend to hold you to my breast. Pretty good, huh? Now let's switch it to stereo. It's playing gentle on my mind and Mary on in the morning, both at the same time. All right. So, pretty cool, huh? Play tape. Really popular. Sadly, um, they didn't, you know, they were beat out by all this newer technology, the cassettes. You can't fast forward it. You can't rewind it. You just have to listen to it all the way through. You can switch between the two channels, which is cool. But, it, you know, in terms of the flexibility of a compact cassette, it's just no, there's no way. It's, a, it's the same size tape, if you'll notice. Same size um, and about the same fidelity, I would say, as an inexpensive cassette. You can see the tape material is the same width, the compact cassette and the play tape. So about the same quality as, a, as an inexpensive cassette tape um, because it uses a pinch roller to uh, keep the speed stable. So that's about it. All right, so we're going to fix this tape, and I'll let you see the inside of it. And then I'm going to follow up on a different video with the stereo um, tape. I hope that's what I've got. Now, here's what I'd like to try. I have searched everywhere on the Internet to find a, a play tape recorder. It's a play tape player. I don't know that they exist. I've looked everywhere. I have seen no evidence of it. And I'm hoping that some of you viewers can say, yeah, Kent, there's a play tape recorder. They're just not very, they're as rare as hen's teeth. Uh, I suspect that that's the problem, that they're just so rare, you're never going to find one on eBay for sure. But let me know in the comments if you know, in fact, that there is a play tape recorder. But I haven't been able to find one. And I can guarantee you if I could find one, I'd buy it if it was reasonable, even if I had to repair it. So, But here's what I'd like to do. Uh, unless you can prove to me that I can get a hold of a play tape recorder pretty easily, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these tapes that may have a missing label and it may have a broken tape or something. Maybe the tape is broken. And I'm going to rewind this tape into a cassette. And then I'm going to record on this cassette in stereo. Might might do both. I might do some stereo and then do a channel one, channel two, right and left. 
And then I'm going to take that tape out of this case again, put it back into and wind it on this spool. Now I'll tell you what, that is not a job for the faint of heart because working with 8-track cassettes, believe me, don't ask me how I know, I'm a pastor, retired pastor, and I can't tell you how many times I've nearly lost my religion. I know you can't lose your religion. I, I've nearly lost my religion working on these confounded things. And if you've ever tried to fix an 8-track tape, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You will, you will, you've got to have the patience of Job to be able to get those things put back and wound back on there. It is, it is so irritating. You know, you can get almost all the way done and then it starts coming unraveling and then you just lose the whole thing and then that's when the steam pop-off valve blows. So I expect that I'll have the same problem with the play tape, especially coming off of this and winding it somehow onto an empty reel cassette. Winding it using a motor or I don't know or a pencil, you know, like we did in the old days. You stick the pencil in and turn it and wind the. I don't. <laughs> so that's what we're going to try, and uh, I'll document that video as well. But in the meantime, in the meantime, let's pull this apart and see what surprise we find if we can get this working on the Play Tape 1200 with the volume control. Probably not a good idea, but I'm going to try to do this on camera, and I may prove my foolishness. I'm gonna, this is a demagnetized screwdriver. It's always good to use demagnetized stuff around tapes, don't you think? So I take, I've taken that screw out, and the two halves should just gently come apart. Sometimes they're a little bit squirrely. There we go. There we go. Okay. You see? Doesn't that look familiar to those of you that have have ventured inside a 8-track? All right. So I think I see what the problem is. I'm missing a spring. I think there's supposed to be a spring in here somewhere. I don't know where, don't remember. I've been in these before. But I think there's supposed to be a spring in here somewhere, and it might be right here. Kind of thinking that there's supposed to be a spring. I'm sorry. I'm thinking that there might supposed to be a spring right there to hold that down. You see the teeth? I'm gonna zoom in here. You see this this tooth right here bites down on the rim of the uh, the reel keeps it from spinning there are little tiny teeth on this rim probably not ed evident on the camera but in any case yeah we're missing this is supposed to be pushed down held down against that at all times until you push the tape into the machine and the capstan roller pushes this see how it works so, let me dig through my tapes. Let me dig through my tapes and see if I can find one that's actually working correctly. And, and see if we can figure out what kind of spring uh, is missing. Alright, so that's what we'll do. Dug into my stash here, my play tapes. Mother Goose songs. That's cool. And that one has been taken apart. You can see the screw in the middle there. That one's been punched through and serviced before. Maybe by me, I don't know. That foam looks like something that I might have put in there. And you notice the wheel has a spring in it. See? So that one might be an option. All the rest of these, <laughs> Nat King Cole again. And the rest of these are not have not been open. And truthfully, you know what these things are selling for on eBay? 80 and 90 bucks. If they're still in their original packaging, they're 80 and 90 bucks. That blows my mind. And these are Nat King Cole, Nat King Cole, Nat King Cole, Nat King Cole. Here's a few more. Uh, yeah. Nat King Cole, Dear Lonely Hearts, Nat King Cole, Dear Lonely Hearts. Yeah. In their original packaging. 
I don't know where I got those. A long time ago. Pretty sure. Yeah. So I did find one. It's that it doesn't have a cover. No idea. It's probably Nat King Cole. But let's go ahead. And it does have a, a spring in the tire. See it bouncing up and down there. So let's open this one up. And let's see what we discover. Hopefully the spring won't pop out on me. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, let's look in here. There's the spring right there. And you notice there's a uh, plastic pin right there that the spring fits on. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this camera to cooperate. Let me pull it down and let's get the, the light in there nice and bright. And then turn the camera. I don't want this to fall out. So you see the spring. and the pin. And as it turns out, as we said a moment ago, we may not be able to fix it. Let me set this down here carefully because notice what is missing from this tape. Right there, the pin is broken off. There is no pin. It's, miss it's broken. So whatever happened to this, I don't know. Hmm. I could put, yeah, I wouldn't stay. I was going to say, I could put a, a coil spring in between here and here, in between here and here, but I wouldn't be able to keep it in there. Like a spring from a, from a, a ballpoint pen, part of that spring would work great. But I wouldn't be able to keep it in there. I don't know how I'd hold it in place. So I really need... See, the problem is, I can't just... Well, just use it without the spring. I can't, because watch what happens when I push this pinch roller all the way in. Now it's hitting this side and catching the rim. And it'll stop the rim from turning. So that's not going to work. The other thing I could do is put a drop of glue right here about where this is in between locked position and just kind of split the difference and put a drop of glue right there and I would just have to be careful that when I pull the tape out that the reel doesn't spin a bunch of tape out. What do you think? That might work. That might work. It's better than not using the cassette at all. I could use a screw, could take a screw and drill through the bottom where that missing pin is. And then I could wind my own spring. I could use some spring material and wind my own spring. That wouldn't be a big deal. Um, and I could use a screw as the a screw much like this one. And it could come up from the bottom of the tape. You can see the indentation there, right there, where that post used to be. So, I don't know. I need to give this some thought. But let's see what's on this mystery tape that is still working correctly. And let's... Uh, wind that little loop out. This is where you start getting into trouble, folks. Were you trying to get that loop? See that loop right there? It's caught. And I don't want this whole thing exploding in my hand. There we go. Just enough to get that loop back on the tire. 
The felt on these is a little bit thin. You can see the felt, but I think it'll be enough to play. So let's put this puppy back together here. Good, good. And we'll put the screw back. And let's try it in the tape, play tape. Right, the felt is too collapsed. If you'll see, the tape is too far away from the felt. And so the only way I can get this to play, so that means that the tape is not pushing against the heads. The only way I can get this to play is to hold this in. Well, the vine control really does work, so... See what's on the other channel. See, I'm holding it in, and it's putting a lot of stress on that pinch roller and capstan, so it's going to drag. Ordinarily, they just pop in and stay. We're at running, like Glenn Campbell will. I say he will, but... Oh, there's no felt at all on that tape. I didn't realize that, so I got to replace the felt on that one. And you notice Nat King Cole is in pretty bad shape. All right. <laughs> all right, here's Glenn Campbell. We just listened to that one a minute ago. Uh, let's try Nat King Cole with some decent felt. Okay, there's a Nat King Cole with some decent felt. See, works fine. Okay, so you get the idea. All right, so what were we going to do? Oh, yeah, we got to replace the felt on uh, on on that other tape. Let's look this up because I didn't know. I recognized it because I was alive during that time. But Petula Clark, 1964. Petula Clark, 1964. Pretty cool. Great tape. Tickled I've got it. Don't have the label for it, but that's okay. I'll make a label for it so I remember next time. But I do need to replace Petula Clark's felt. <laughs> so, all right. I'll let you know how the stereo tape goes if I get one. And I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted on the transfer of play tape to a cassette box, recording on it, and then transferring it back into the play tape spool. It's a big job. I don't know. I don't know whether I can do it or not, but I sure would love to try so okay, I've opened up the, the play tape case and I wanted you to see the uh, headphone jack or the external speaker. It's not a headphone, it's external speaker. And the jack is right here. And there are two wires going to it, the yellow and the black, that come off the amplifier board, yellow and black is a monaural signal. So there's just two wires, not three, that come on this yellow and black, uh, yellow and black wire, come over to the external speaker jack, and then two wires off of that come down to the speaker. So if you plug an external speaker jack into here, it disconnects this speaker. It is not stereo. So their idea of making a stereo setting on this switch is rather interesting. It'll let you play both 
and it mixes those signals and sends them out monaural onto the speaker and to the headphone or the, the external speaker. Now I knew there weren't two speakers in here so I wasn't concerned about it playing stereo on this unit but I wondered why they ran uh, I thought they might have this jack wired as a stereo jack so that you could get two separate discrete channels on the stereo setting of the switch but it's not set up that way so it's rather peculiar if you have any thoughts about that let me know in the comments but no surprises definitely not stereo certainly didn't need it to be stereo in uh, uh, on a little tiny portable device like that so there are the insides the uh, you can see the the tape heads down inside there more clearly and the drive capstan drive that's better Without speaking, she tells me I love you. 